Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I guess with the video we are done, I can go home now, right? Thank you for that. All right. Okay. Um, my standing here is mostly because for the last 27 years, I've been involved with the operations at the number one airport in the world for passenger movement and, car and cargo movement, no, operations. And what we're talking about is about 100 million passengers per year. And the number of takeoffs and landing is 2,000 800 plus per day. 2,800 plus takeoffs and landing per day at a facility that has five runways. Of the five runways, two outer runways for landing, two inner runways for takeoff, then a fifth runway that can operate both on takeoff and landing. Now, I was privileged for the first 10 years of those 27 years to be the chief electrical engineer reporting to the director of engineering responsible to make sure that the electrical systems were always operational. You do not want to have a flight on final approach and then lights go out on the runway. So we made sure that's always working. And in that vein, I was able to understand also most of the operations at the airport and be able to go to various facilities and be able to advise them on their own operation. After you master the art of running your own, everybody wants to come and hear what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, what it is that you can improve on and so on and so forth. So that is why I am here today. The second reason I am here today is I happen to be born on the continent from Cameroon. So this for me is personal, is passion. I have been to several countries. I have been to several countries just to talk about that. So when we get into the meat of this, you will understand a lot more. So the video was to show you a little bit about what we do. And this is an overview for key. We do engineering, we do construction, we do construction quality control. We also do facilities engineering as well as power quality. Power is very important on the operation of airports. We found out the wrong way at Atlanta on December 17, 2017, where we had a complete outage in the passenger system. So all the terminals went out that particular day. I happened not to be in the city, but within 15 minutes, I was getting calls. And I'll be remiss if I did not tell you that today, I have been part of the solution to what occurred in 2017, where we're trying to implement a fix that will enable us to avoid for that type of scenario to ever occur at Atlanta Airport. Now, key engineering, we talk about partnership, collaborative efforts. So we have collaborating with Michael Baker International, Chuafe, BRTU. And the reason is because we understood very early on that when you go to talk with your client, it is important to be able to offer them a solution to their problem so they don't have to go shopping for the next part of your solution. So if the client comes to you with a situation you either have the answer in-house or already have partners that are able to provide that solution. So essentially, you give them a turnkey for whatever the situation is that they need to address. We are here today to talk about Botswana. I was previewed, I'm privileged to be here during the U.S. trade conference a few months back. I heard the president of this country speak. 
And then I heard the minister speak. And that's why I came back today for this particular opportunity. Thank you for that. So we, will, we are basically here to partner with the country to help promote tourism as you want it. And we understand that the first facility that everybody encounters when they enter into a country is an airport. And the way they navigate through the airport makes that experience already very encouraging or very disappointing. So we will be looking at all of that as a complete package and we'll expect the government to tell us how they want to improve their facility and we'll tell them, we we'll propose to them how we believe they can best implement it. And because we, we believe that you know best what you want. I cannot come tell you what I want. I know how all the other airports work. So when I come to you, I'll say, okay, if you want A, I'll give you A with this caveat to A. That's what we're all about. So when the government tells us what exactly they want, then we're in a position to now develop a specific program that will work to their needs, that we'll be able to implement within the time frame allotted and the budget given us. Now, as I said, we have relationship, as I advised earlier, and the government will be the partner in this whole venture. And most importantly, we have experts in our team that are ready to provide a solution. Then we are proponents of technology transfer. As I said, I was born on the continent. So the most important thing that I want you to remember, if you make key a part of your operation, when we're done building the facilities, we will train Botswana on how to operate them, maintain them, why? So that at the end of the day, you don't need me to come back and repair things for you when you have the technical know-how for some of the young people that are in your country. That is the end story here, if you take nothing else. So we are looking at international uh, regional airports that's why I say you tell us what it is that you're proposing to do. And we come in, we develop various scenarios, and we offer them to you. So we coordinate with all the various agencies, in our case, IKO here on the continent, and go into all the details as to what is needed to bring the airport to the standard that you want, make it comfortable, make it operational. We tourism airports then the tourists want a hotel development they want to go play golf they want some luxury lodges we have partners that are ready to come in and invest into those facilities and so the goal is to understand the various needs again put a package that is customized to your needs and when we talk about hotel we're talking about branding as well. So if you need a specific brand, we'll make sure we bring them to you. The advantage of having relationships with a lot of different entities make it easy to afford that. Also, yesterday I heard Air Botswana, Ethiopian Air. I work with Ethiopian Air for a few other things, even with Atlanta Airport. So if we want to, when the facilities are built, the demand for passenger traffic is there, and you need more airline partners, we are also able to negotiate and bring those partners to the table to talk with you. Mixed-use developments and all the sustainability that comes with that, again, we'll be able to put the package for you and make it very simple and smooth. If a tourist comes to the country, God forbid, gets sick, get into a hurt or something. They want wellness centers, hospitals. You don't want them to go back and put in a what's it, trip advisor. I got hurt, 
and I do not have a facility to go to for treatment. So we make sure we build state-of-the-art facilities so they get their treatment. So on trip advisor, they will say, I got hurt. I needed a facility. I went in. It was state-of-the-art. I recommend you go there and not worry about getting sick or getting hurt or anything when you're in the country. So again, packaging will be available. All these facilities, when they're all built, ready to go, what do you need? Public relations. Give people a reason to come to Botswana to use this facility. That would justify the cost that you put into building them. So in that vein, I'm going to call on my marketing manager for a few seconds to talk about that part of it so that you can understand what it is that we can offer you. Ms. Anze Mufo, please. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Come on, cheer up a little bit. It's a beautiful day. We're in Botswana. And you have all the diamonds in the house and the men that afford the diamonds, right? Or not. Anyway, what is all of this stuff without public relations? Really nothing. I'm pretty sure everyone here understands what marketing is for. So you create a product and you tell people to come and get it. But the one thing about Botswana that I've noticed is that it's a very, very big kept secret. We don't want to go to Will Smith, who's at the Okavango Delta. We want to build homegrown celebrities. So what we're creating right now is Key Engineering has engaged its partners in Hollywood to actually make sure that when the airports are built, the airline partners come in, the hotel partners come in, and you have the hospitals and the schools. What happens is everybody else out there doesn't know what's going on in here, right? Um, so what we're trying to do here is to make sure that we create relationships with Botswana and Hollywood, which is the center. And our key thing that we're starting with is to be able to bring, starting with the minister, to Hollywood, starting March, if they're ready, of 2024, to join one of the most prestigious and exclusive and anticipated events of the year, which is the Academy Oscars, so that they can meet with studio chiefs, executives, and bring film into Botswana. Once all of that is done, then we can hire Will Smith. How about that? We give him a job and tell him, you come to Botswana, you make the film in Botswana, you bring people to Botswana, and then you take it back to Hollywood and tell them what you've seen in Botswana so they can come. And we do all of the press releases here, we do all of the movie um, scenarios in here, and that's Gina. I don't know if any of you know Gina Prince. She's one of the honorees last year who won an Academy Award, and she did the movie Woman King in Benin. And that highlighted Benin. We've done with uh, Ghana, South Africa. And she's ready to come to, Ghana, uh, to Botswana and create that particular scenario. So we want to make sure that we bring public relations into Botswana in a way that will make the rest of the world know and understand what Botswana is up to, besides just diamonds. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anze. Now, I told you I heard your president speak a few months ago. I heard the vice president yesterday talk about joint venture, and I heard the minister talk about tourism. One thing I want to emphasize is Atlanta Airport, before becoming number one, was just a field. It was an airfield with crop dusters. That was it, it was used by farmers. Then there was a visionary at that airport. He used to be the mayor for the city, Mayor Jackson. He had a vision and he says, build the airport, people will come. Everybody thought he was crazy because they were not seeing the traffic. Guess what? More than 20 years later, they've built the airport. People have come. Mayor Jackson is 
dead and buried, but his legacy lives on. There is, the airport was renamed after him when he passed. International terminal was named for him. Highways named for the man. So I'm saying this to say vision, visionaries, very critical to development. It makes you selfless. Now, all of what we just talked about, the team that will be in front of you from the first go all the way down is here. We like to call ourselves a mini United Nations because, as I say, I'm from Cameroon, and there is as well. We have uh, members of the team from Botswana that we are talking to, some members of the team from Ethiopia, some from Nigeria, and of course, the American citizens born. But the point is, with that whole team, we are ready to come in and grow with you so that in next 10, 15, 20 years, you will also be another success story. And then we're talking about accessibility to come to Botswana. It's very accessible. Instead of hopping left, right, center to get here, it took me a few days to get here, it will be faster and it will be more enjoyable. But most will don't forget Botswana now becomes the talk of the world. It's a secret. Until I came here a few months ago, I did not know anything about the diamonds in Botswana. I didn't. But guess what? Now I know about it. Tomorrow, we need to talk about tourism in Botswana so that when you Google tourism, safari, Botswana pops up, not Kenya, but Botswana. Can we do that? Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel and Anze, for such an inspiring presentation. I love the foresight. I love the foresight that you're including the youth of today and also hoping to get to the Oscars. That's amazing. Let's watch this space. I'm definitely going to be tuning in in March to see. Um, wouldn't that be fantastic if our, if our minister was at the Oscars? Um, I, I love that marketing foresight. I think that that is quite key. And I love that our partners are ready for this future investment. Um, one more presentation before we get underway with our Dragon's Den type um, segment. We've got Moshie Ratsibe, the Director of Investment and Promotion for the Botswana Investment and Trade Center. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Program Director. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Mushira Zebe from the Botswana Investment and Trade Center. I work as director responsible for investment promotion. Uh, my portfolio uh, has got a focus on financial services uh, with a bias towards what we call International Financial Services Center. I also look after the tourism businesses, uh, education, health services, and, and, and others, including um, ICT. I don't know whether my presentation is, is ready now to yeah to play. I could do with the help of the flicker. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, it does work. Um, I'm, I'm quite impressed, and I must say congratulations to BTO and the Parrot Ministry, Ministry of Tourism, uh, for putting together such a magnificent, uh, well put uh, uh, conference, so to speak. Um, when I walked in earlier in the morning, I was surprised actually on the second day to see so many people who have filled up the room, and I had a conversation with someone who reminded me the reason why um, several years ago I decided to jump out of the accounting profession to be where I am today. Uh, normally, when you attend um, finance account related uh, functions like these ones, you know that at the end of the evening, everybody gets to be sent home. Um, if ever you are asked to hang around for a bid for a networking session, chances are you will likely be asked to pay for yourself if ever there is a buy at the back. So 
I sort of understand why we still have a room filled up. But nonetheless, well done to BTO and the government of Botswana for putting together this wonderful summit. Mine this morning is, thank you, mine this morning is quite a, a, a small presentation, very, very brief. I've just been asked to come and share with you around the, the project facilitation process that we engage in here as government of, of Botswana, how we facilitate investment projects into the country. As I've said, I work for the Botswana Investment and Trade Center. We are an investment promotion agency. Our role primarily is to attract um, investors into, into um, the country. So we go out um, using our investment promotion strategy, which has got a very strong route to market, going to the markets to talk to investors about investing and doing business in Botswana. We do have a very interesting component of our mandate, which is um, export development and promotion. So the business that are already here in Botswana, once you're invested in Botswana, we work with you to take your products then outside the country for export-related purposes. Um, as well, for those that are doing business locally here, we've got a component um, uh, called um, um, uh, uh, Buy Botswana uh, Campaign. It's, a, it's an initiative that we have introduced several years ago where we are encouraging corporates, large corporates that are here to work closely with small medium enterprises to make sure that they support them by buying what is produced and, 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 and supplied uh, locally as it were. But even more importantly, uh, through our brand management function as uh, BITC, we have got the mandate of promoting the country, not just for investments, but even more importantly for tourism-related purposes, just building, ensuring that the equity of this brand, Brand Botswana, is well known to the world, is strong in the minds of not just investors, tourists, and, and visas uh, and other visas um, as, as it were. Emmanuel has just said that he never knew about Botswana until recently when he visited here for the first time about the diamond, about the beef industry that we are so strong in. Uh, it, it just suggests that perhaps we need to do a little bit more as government or government-related agencies, BITC, BTO, and others that um, have got complementary mandates. Um, the one aspect that I want to talk to you about is the, the aspect of Botswana One Stop Service Center. This is where I normally say this is where the rubber hits the road at BITC. We have a one-stop service center at our head office here in Gaboroni where all investors who have decided to come and set up business here in Botswana come to for facilitation. You may wish to uh, register your business and you've got no idea how to go about it. What we have done as government, we have since transformed the way that government does business, transforming uh, government services by making sure that we are automating them, we are digitalizing them. As a matter of fact, today if you want to register your business, you can incorporate it from the comfort of your couch, sitting in the USA, sitting in South Africa and anywhere in the world without necessarily being here. You even do payments that are required for registration uh, online. You don't have to necessarily to be here physically. Of course, there are other requirements that one needs to follow. For example, I, if you incorporate, you have to have, ensure that you have got a resident, not just a citizen uh, director, but a resident director, as an example, to make sure that you complete your incorporation. So investors who are here or who may not necessarily be here virtually, they want to set up and register here, they come to our one-stop service center to seek such kind of service. You may wish to <clears throat> register for, uh, with government for other trade and business related uh, regulatory requirements. For example, if you're in the manufacturing space, a licensed activity, uh, we will help you with that. Tourism is, an act is, a, is, a, is, a, is a licensed activity in terms of if you want to offer a service of a lodge, of a hotel, and stuff like, stuff like that. You come through us, we work closely with BTO. We will handhold you and make sure that we knock at the right doors and point to the right people to make sure that you get help, and not just help, but the quality of help that we deserve as an investor at the right speed. If you are looking for land, ordinarily commercial land, you want to build a hotel, a lodge in Botswana, what then happens with the, with the, with the land authorities, generally speaking, is that these land parcels are advertised as and when they become available. It may happen every year, every two years, every three years, depending on the area where you are seeking land. However, as an investor, government understands the agency at which you want to be given land. Through our Botswana One Stop Service Center, working with other partners, such as the BTO, 
if you are looking for a commercial land to build a, pro, a, a, a lodge, for example, a hotel, you come to BITC. Instead of waiting for two to three years, four years, for the um, local municipalities to advertise the land parcels as and when they become available, we will ensure that government allocates you land directly with speed. So essentially, I often say that we essentially just jump the queue for you. You don't have to queue like, to like others that are just visiting for the purpose of um, touring the country. Um, as a matter of fact, as BITC, we own a number of uh, factory sites. BDC also, the CEO just spoke here, they also own a number of factory sites. So if you are looking for, okay, I know you are in the tourism space, but just for your own information, just to demonstrate and buttress the point further that government is serious about facilitating investments in Botswana. We own a number of factory sites wherein you are looking for soft lending as an investor, we are able to allocate you factory space directly. BITC, BDC, uh, we are able, that's what we are able to do. Uh, you know, you'll connect you with the right banks to make sure that you are able to be assisted, opening of bank accounts, utility connections. We've got liaison officers in these different government agencies where, where, where the procedure or the protocols are such that when we are bringing investors to them, they assist them with speed, with the quality of service that um, they deserve. Importantly, we've just been having a discussion here, the panel that came out of here, the BDC CEO, mentioning the fact that you know, one of the things that they consider from a project point of view is really around issues around uh, environment, um, where you have to uh, comply with certain uh, environmental requirements. Again, as BITC, we have got liaison officers within the Ministry of, of Environment. We will make sure that we handhold you. We take you to these uh, offices. We make sure that you get the right help at the right speed, at the right quality. It may as well be that when you set up here in Botswana, you, you are looking for certain skills that are not really, readily available in Botswana. Or well, as a business owner, your wish is to come and run the business by yourself, to operate the business physically, uh, living here with your family in Botswana. You are looking for uh, immigration-related uh, uh, authorization, uh, 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 requirements around visas, uh, work permits, residence permits, you come to BITC. I can assure you, this we do with speed. This we do with quality. I mean, um, n usually we say um, it takes at 14 days to issue a work and residence permit for a skill that is not readily available here. Of course, you still have to follow the necessary requirements, labor-related requirements. You still have to advertise the role. You have to demonstrate that you could not find the skills here. Once you have satisfied that, you, 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 through BITC, you apply. We take your application. We have a board at the Labor Department or the ministry that sits every week solely to look at our applications as BITC. So therefore, we are able to turn around this thing within seven days. But our protocol says 14 days. But in terms of the speed of delivery of service, normally seven days is how we're able to turn this thing around. And I think uh, it's, a, it's a commitment by our government that we are serious about facilitating investors into our country. Uh, other requirements around taxes, where you want to register for taxes, or oh, you've got issues. Okay, we hope that you don't have. You've got issues with the tax authorities. We are the go-to people. You come through us, with, we will uh, handhold you and make sure that you get that necessary help from government, different government agencies. After care services, you may wish to expand the land parcel that we had previously given to you. Uh, it's a lodge that you're operating, it's a hotel that you're operating, you want to increase space, you come to us. You want to get permit renewals, you come to us. These, I can assure you, if there is one thing that you are paid for, I'm not too sure whether we are paid well for it, one that you are paid for and we deliver on it is really around land allocation, direct land allocation, immigration-related issues, business registration. These services that we have listed here, through our one-stop service, uh, our bread and butter, we do them um, uh, with our eyes closed. Now, as BITC, we, all, we operate a number of regional offices here. We have got a head office here in Gaboroni, but importantly, those that are in Europe, uh, closely, closer to you, we've got an office in London. Uh, it's able to mirror exactly what the head office is able to do. Those that are coming in through, into the continent through South Africa, we've got an office in Johannesburg. You can, uh, you can actually engage us through our South Africa office. Even more important in the Asia area, we've got an office in India. You can actually speak to us through that office in, 
in India. Other than that, I think, let me end it here, but I must reiterate the, the fact and the point that government is serious about facilitating investors, about doing business, and we stand ready as BITC, as BTO, as BDC for funding purposes, CEDA for funding purposes, uh, we stand ready to facilitate you as investors. We have rolled out the red carpet, and Botswana is for you to take in terms of to take up in terms of op investment opportunities. Whatever you need, our services we remain readily available to assist you. Just uh, the last advice, maybe to investors, that um, the CEO of BDC. I keep referring to his, his presentation here. We are, we, I mean, we are addicted to the rule of law, as our president normally says that key considerations for doing business in Botswana, you just have to make sure that you observe the necessary legal requirements. Ensure compliance, whether in the tourism space, ensure compliance is around, around governance, is around environment, social aspects, in ensuring that the community is well incorporated within your business plan. You know, you are very clear in terms of how you're going to impact the lives and the livelihood of the people where you're operating from. That's what this government is interested in, and that is what is normally, that, that's what normally will help your business to succeed from a point of view of getting access to land, from a point of view of getting funding. Government is particularly interested at some of these things. ESG, 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 as you normally say, it's actually um, quite uh, key. So th that's just my uh, brief advice and message to the would-be investors that want to come into Botswana. Other than that, you are welcome to Botswana, and we hope to see you at our offices uh, from here onwards. Thank you. Thank you so much for that insightful presentation. I think you should use jump the, we will jump the queue for you as your new tagline. I like it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, if you were here yesterday afternoon, you'll know that this next session is a slight departure from our usual programming. We're stealing a concept from a popular show in the UK called Dragon's Den. We'll be showcasing the entrepreneurs and their projects that are looking for that crucial funding, investment and partnerships to get off the ground. We'll be allowing these entrepreneurs to present their projects, a brief elevator pitch, if you like, before our panel of experts. And of course, you, our esteemed audience. In turn, our panel of experts, who I'll introduce very soon, will be asking some searching and probing questions to test the business models of these projects presented before us. It's sure to be a lively and interactive discussion. So let me introduce our panel of experts. First, we have Professor Ian Golding in the Oxford University. Um, he's the Professor of Globalization and Development and the founding director of the Oxford Martin School and the former Vice President of the World Bank. Ian has a long history in Africa and has served as an advisor to Nelson Mandela. Please welcome Ian Golding to the stage. Thank you. We also have Gerald Lawless, the WTTC ambassador and former president and also CEO of Jamira Group. Please welcome Gerald. And finally, I don't want to interrupt your wolf whistle there. And finally, we've got Gobu Samang Dempsey Kabine, the CEO of Corporate Nexus. Not only is Mr. Kabine experienced in international trade and development, he's also an aviation expert with over 30 years' experience in the industry. <laughs> Now, on to our presentations. We have nine projects in this session, and the brains behind the projects will have a brief three-minute pitch. Now, this is crucial. I will be timing you, so please be succinct. And afterwards, they'll answer a few probing questions from our panel of experts. We now welcome to the stage our first entrepreneurial hopeful, and this is a hotel facility which will be presented by Bufoleswe Melilo, Group CFO of Choves Limited. Please come to the stage. Are we here? No. Okay. Opportunity lost. Never mind. They might turn up a bit later. Uh, moving forward, our next one is Holiday Resort. In goodness, I haven't had a chance to practice this. I'm sure I will butcher this. But a holiday resort in Salibe Pehique. And it will be presented by Tebe Sefako, the Managing Director of Sophie Holdings Limited. 
No, no show as well, okay. Um, next, we have, I feel like an auctioneer here. Oh, I'm so sorry, was I too fast? I'm so sorry. Um, Mr. Malilo, Group CFO for Choves Limited, and he will be presenting about a hotel facility. Okay, so if, if you are presenting, please be ready and, and be ready at the front here so that I don't rush through and you get missed out. So please, uh, Mr. Malilo, please come through with your presentation. Now, I will start my stopwatch when you start. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah, I'm the first one here. I don't know whether it's luck or bad luck, but I'll give it a go. Thank you. Uh, my name is Butule Ramlilo. I'm the group CFO uh, for Showvest. Showvest, uh, it's a company based in Chobe, and I'm here to present to you um, an investment opportunity. So this investment opportunity is called the village at Chobe. This is a, a JV, a multi-purpose hotel development, which will have 70 rooms, 30 tents, seven safari sites, and we're looking at a total investment of $6 million. So in this JV, there's currently a structure. Um, we have Kalinan Holdings and Shearwater, Botswana, both are owning 24%, uh, and we've got a third partner there who is a citizen partner. So Shearwater Botswana um, will be the management partner in this JV with a management contract. They are going to develop and operate the hotel. So between Kalinan and Shearwater, they already operate a successful safari business in Chope uh, called Chobezi Safaris. So Chobezi Safaris um, does boat cruises uh, on the Chope River. They also offer Chope uh, game drives inside the national park and it's a successful business there. So who are these partners? We have Kalnan Holdings, which is one of the biggest, uh, largest tour operators based uh, in Jobek. They own premier brands, which includes Thompson's, Springbok Atlas, um, Hilton Rose, Pen Travel, and Kalnan will provide a huge quality massive base uh, for this new project. And the other partner, which is uh, Shearwater, they are one of the biggest regional tourism players uh, based in Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. They run successful uh, operations in Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, and Mauritius. So the brands that they run include Chobezi, uh, Zambezi Helicopter Company, Explorers Village, and Shore Adventures. So they will also bring a pool of clients uh, in this new uh, development. So currently, Shearwater runs a very successful um, hotel operation in Victoria Falls, and it's just 70 kilometers from Chobe. So the Explorers Village um, has got 96 rooms, uh, it's got 38 tents and five safari tents, and it's a massive um, successful business. And in August, it had occupancy rates of 78% on average, which is the highest in town. So there are plans there to also expand capacity there to 150 rooms uh, by 2025. Shearwater as well um, has got partners. Um, they've got the market, the experienced developers, the operators, and they run a successful model. So what are we looking for here in this $6 million investment? The current shareholders will bring in $2 million, and we're looking for external funding for $4 million, which will be debt finance. We're also open to, to other schemes of finances. Uh, a joint debt equity combination will be considered. So ladies and gentlemen, in summary, we are saying Chauvet has got the land, the architects have been appointed, they're already looking at drawings and developing a plan, and now we've got a partner who's a JV who can develop, operate, and fill the hotel. So already they've run a successful project in Victoria Falls, and they just need the funding for $4 million. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Stay there, stay there, don't go away. Thank you very much for your presentation. Slightly over, but don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you um, very much. Our panel of experts, uh, do, we, do we have any feedback or, or 
probing questions. Well, just one of the first questions I would ask you, you can just show me what the, the average room rates, you said the occupancy? It's 78%. 78%, very yes. healthy indeed. Yeah. And is it, um, is it seasonal or does it work throughout the 12 months of the year? It works throughout 12, 12 months of the year. So it's a pretty even spread of even occupancy. Spread, yeah. What's the average rate? The average rate is about $110. About? Yeah. Not exactly? Yeah, $110. $110, yeah. right. And uh, how does that compare in the, is it like three, four, five star market? No, it's in the three star bracket. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's in the niche um, grade there. We didn't go for higher or lower, we're just in the middle there. Right, and last question for me. You say you want to raise the debt of four million. Yes. Uh, you want to raise it in debt or you want to raise it in equity? If you were, give, if you were offered equity rather than debt, would you take it? Yeah, we were open to, to, to both schemes. I uh, was looking for debt for over 15 years, but we're open to a combination of debt and equity. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes, Mr. Kabine also. Thank you, Gerald Lillis. Um, some insights from Jamira and Mr. Kabine. Um, I, I note that um, Chovest is a combination of um, a joint venture between two foreign entities, which is Collinum and Share Water, and it's, those two are holding 48% of the shares. Uh, one of them is bringing two million US dollars, and then the local citizen is holding 52% of the shares. Other than, okay, let me, both Collinum and Share Water have been shown to be active already both locally and regionally in, in the space of uh, what business you want to set up in Kasan. The citizen shareholder, what are they bringing on? Is it skill? Is it land? I just want to appreciate what the citizen shareholder is bringing. And the reason why I'm asking this is that depending on the structure of the shareholding, one does not want to hear tomorrow court cases now come in to say you are squeezing the citizen shareholder out. So how, how um, reinforced is the citizen shareholder and as I say, what are they bringing to the table? Thank you very much for your, for your question. Um, the citizen shareholder is bringing the skills. Um, they will be full-time employed in this business. The other two partners, they are foreign partners. So the local partner will basically run the business on behalf of the partnership. Okay, great. Uh, Professor Golding? Yeah, I, I, uh, I can appreciate the need for this. I think Shearwater and Kalnan are very credible. Uh, I know both of them. Uh, I know Chobi, which is a garden of Eden uh, on earth. Um, what's not clear to me is exactly where this lodge is going to be. Is it going to be in Chobi or in Kisani? Kisani is not a garden of Eden, by the way. Uh, it's a, a tough town. Uh, so I think that makes a big difference. Um, but otherwise, I can appreciate the need for this, and it sounds like a good project to me. Thank you. Um, the project will be in Chope, along the main road. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for your presentation. Uh, next up, we've got a holiday resort in Sibile. No. Thank you. Are we really going to do all oh, nine? Thank you. The clicker. Um, next up, we have a holiday resort in Sibile, Pahikwe, and it's presented by Tebe Sefako, Managing Director of SV Holdings. Here we go, here's your, I don't know if you'll need this, if you're here, and here's your clicker, and three minutes, and I'll start the timer when you start. Okay, good luck. Good morning. Like it has been said, my name is uh, Pepe Safako of uh, Sphi Holdings, PTY LTD. Um, my main interest in doing a holiday resort at Pikwe came about the government initiative. Uh, Pique was a mining town before, and uh, the mine closed. And when the mine closed, 
it meant uh, people who were working in, in Pique, depending on the mine. They, they are now jobless. And then government wanted to diversify the economy of Pique, and uh, hence, in contributing to the diversification, I am interested in doing a holiday resort. Then uh, the holiday resort, uh, thinking of a three-star, 63-room hotel that would have the water park, fully fledged uh, water park as a source of attraction, and also a theme park. Water park on its own as attraction, also it to diversify the tourism sector. We depend, when we talk tourism, we are all thinking wildlife. We are thinking uh, Chobe. We are thinking Okavango. And uh, if we are to, to, to turn around and probably introduce a type of uh, tourism in, in, in leisure, then we'd be thinking the, the, the water park. And uh, the uh, water park, it would attract uh, people from all the sphere of life. Those that would want to do business as they relax at Pique for their business meetings, those that are thinking vocations, and also the international transfers. There are a lot of people that are coming from South Africa, from Jobek to Kassan, and uh, a lot of them would be on the road through Khaburone, and this is a longer route to take. And if you give them an alternative route from Jobek through Pique, they would rest for a day or two at Pique to Kasani, to Okavango, and even on their coming back from there, they would spend a bit of time, and not for them to miss the waters, then the water park is, 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 is there for them. That would be the target market for the resort. And uh, one of the things I've said, uh, a lot of people have lost jobs in, in Pique. And again, just to give Pique life, the employment, as we are hoping to employ uh, more than 60 people, uh, would tap in from the Pico community. They would be given priority in terms of uh, employment. And also, all this legislative on the environment, as we do the project, the construction, and also even in the operation, the issue of probably saving the environment would also be looked at. We are looking at a turnover of uh, 20 million pula a year in the, uh, in the first year at occupancy rate of uh, 50%. Most of the hotels in Habron, the, the bigger one of uh, at least 50 rooms, the occupancy rate is, is at uh, 50%. That's what we've used. And uh, we are looking to generate a net profit of uh, 8.3 million pula. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, do we have any questions from our panel of experts? Who would like to go first? Mr. Cavini? Thank you. Um, what are you looking for in terms of investment? That's my first question. Uh, the second question is um, investment. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? How much? That's the first question. The second question is I'm not sure if you are very elaborate on your potential market. We agree, you and I, that Pique, after the mine closed down, is, 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 is on a downtrod. Yes, we know this government is doing all it can to invest in Pique uh, with the citrus uh, plant as an example. But what other investment opportunities do you see being carried out by government to boost the population of Pique? And yes, I agree with you. Maybe your target is not your Pique resident, but those that are coming from elsewhere. Uh, your Chobe, your Okovango are well-placed in terms of 
they've been marketed over years in terms of tourist attraction. You probably are going to be one of the first to start that marketing exercise of attracting tourists to Pigwe. What do you have in mind for that? Um, I'm looking for funding of about 140 million for the construction of the, the resort. Um, ready, I'm ready to enter into any kind of uh, partnership with whoever would be interested. The Pikwe community, the facility as is, they would still be using it probably when they've got uh, workshops, when they want to do parties. The water park would be having the, the wave pool that we normally refer to as the artificial beach that if anyone would want to have a wedding of some sort, they can use the, the beach. Instead of us traveling to South Africa, where the artificial beach is around, so they, they, they may use it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Golding. Yeah. Um, I understand uh, the urgent need for creating jobs in Pikwe. And I commend you for your social commitment. But mixing business ideals with um, social ideals is always a tricky thing. And um, the question really is, what's the business case? Uh, how do you know that you're going to get 50% occupancy? It's f about four hours from Khabarone, I think. It's off the main road between Khabarone and Francistown. It's not really on the route that tourists will take. Um, and it's a depressed community that doesn't have much income. So I remain unconvinced by the business case that you're going to get the occupancy that you want um, if you're able to raise the money, which is a lot of money. Uh, it's about, if I understand, about $10 million uh, to, to build this facility. So uh, I, I'm not convinced by the business case. Okay. Um, uh, Gerald Lawless, did you, would you like to comment? Um, a life as is, there are a lot of dynamics when you look at the business dynamics. Yes, Pikwe, for now, it may look out of reach. Um, Pikwe, for now, is a bit isolated, but it's upon us as people to sell the town putting the water park there, at the end of the day, the interest is to revive it, give it a theme. When we think holidaying, we should be thinking Pikwe as an alternative, as compared to Kasani and uh, Okavango. The rest of the population of Botswana is it's, it's, it's this side. And Okavango, Chobe, they are a bit far as compared to Pikwe. And again, we are saying the population, again, of Botswana, about a quarter, resides in that part, the central part. So when you put the water park, you start advertising. And uh, we are changing as Botswana. And we still have faith for this modern attractions, modern tourism. And there are a lot of Bajana going to Sun City for the wave pool at Sun City. There are some of Bajana going to Johannesburg for Emerald, where there is the, the water park. And it's, it's as, as you advertise, as you sell your product, they change. We change, and we change fast especially because of technology these days, where we take advantage of technology to advertise our products. Thank you. Uh, you got your fan club. You got yes. your fan club there anyway. That's good. 
Uh, just a couple of questions because you gave a lot of detail there as well. I see that you're going to have quite a lot of uh, ancillary facilities such as uh, food and beverage, such as the water park, such as the, the, just the overall approach that you're, if you're going to try to get people to come for weddings and everything, that um, I, I worry about that plus the hotel. How, how do you see that you can retrain staff? How do you see that you can actually facilitate the staffing levels that you might require within the hotel? And the, then the overall facility, the overall investment. Do you not understand me? How, how are you going to staff it? Oh, yes. Sorry? Um, how are you going to staff your facility? Yeah, where are you going to get your staff from? Would it be better if I use the handheld mic? The, the staffing. Currently, we've got a lot of graduates in the hospitality and tourism industry. Uh, we've got uh, Botswana Accountancy College that, that are training our young people. We also have schools at uh, Maung, those that train uh, young people in the hospitality and uh, tourism. So we are going to tap from there. Again, also, uh, we, we would have a training program where we see a need. We would still take people outside if possible. Again, we may be saying we want our employment to be mainly locals. But at the same time, when you start operating, you, you may s still have uh, the international employees so that you also tap in their expertise. And uh, as, as you do that, you, we should also have a prog localization program so that we learn from them. At the same time, we train our own people. We, we have a problem with uh, uh, unemployment graduates in our country, especially in the area of uh, tourism. So to being able to get the numbers. I don't understand why you don't hear me, because I can hear the, uh, Sorry, what I'm trying to say is that I can understand that uh, you, you, uh, you have the people available, but what I'm still concerned about is how you would actually set up uh, a whole retraining. There's no point in bringing in everybody from outside if you don't provide employment from the people within Tikwe itself, which is the whole point of your investment. So would you consider a, a, an educational facility like a vocational school uh, as part of the necessary infrastructure in order to be able to retrain your, uh, your staff that would work in the hotel? That's something I think you should consider. You don't really have to answer it, but I think it needs to be considered. And the other question I had is that, where is the money coming from? What is your, as Professor Golding said, what is the business plan in terms of how you're going to raise your $10.5 million equivalent to be able to do the event. What's your plan to get the money? Are you going to borrow the money? Have you got the money? How is it going to be? I was saying, I'm here looking for an investor. Yes. 100%, 50%, 20%? 100%. Okay, thank you. And That's the question. For, for that also, it could come in any form of agreement that uh, the, the two parties sure. would get into. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just Thank my you. last point. Look, I, I hear what you are saying, and uh, you mentioned Sun City. Uh, Sun City, Sol Kesner, that, that's basically who we are talking about. And yes, Sun City was just a little desert like Pique when it started. But one of the major attractions that happened to get people to Sun City, for example, was gambling. Uh, is that something that you are willing to consider in your facility, which basically now talks adding other attractions to the place other than just a theme park and, uh, and what you have in mind now? As, as the business starts operating and as it grows, there would be need again to look at other sources of attraction. When you take Sun City, they don't have a fully fledged water park. 
but rather they've got the wave pool. So the water park that I'm talking about, it, it would be, when we say fully, there would be the wave pool as a source of attraction. There would be some water slides. There would be the, the, the spa. So all these things, they, they would be serving as a source of attraction. There would also be the, the sauna room. It's not, it's not that common. So then the, the sauna room, it has all its benefits. So we may talk about the benefits on the other day. Okay. Subject for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sefako. Thank you. Great. Well, our next uh, hmm? presentation is Tree Hotel on the banks of the Haberome Dam by Sylvester Shimane, the founder and director of Salemo Rustic Hotels. Thank you. The click is there. Oh, I'm going to set the timer. Three minutes. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you, Madam MC. Uh, uh, thank you, panelists. What I'll be taking you through is what we call the pinnacle of African luxury. So this is essentially a hotel on the banks of uh, Khabarone Dam. Our business model is a fully serviced hotel, uh, which uh, will have accommodation of 70 rooms. Uh, it will have dining amenities, uh, health and wellness amenities. It will have a conference center. Uh, it will have uh, a, an art, art gallery, which will be one of the differentiating factors in, in the hotel. It will also boast of uh, an infinity pool and other pools as well. In terms of uh, what we see in the market, the tourism has really grown over the years. Uh, the sector has grown over the years in terms of our GDP numbers. We've also seen arrivals uh, experiencing a growth tra trajectory over the years, particularly during the pre-COVID era. Uh, and that's really what, what is driving our, our market uh, in terms of investing in this sector. Uh, what we have achieved so far uh, as a business at a development phase, we've, we've signed the lease agreement uh, with BTO. Uh, we've paid our lease deposits in full. Uh, we have an SLA agreement uh, with an award-winning architect in South Africa. And we've done conceptual drawings, which you have seen in our first page. Uh, in terms of getting ready for operations, uh, we've obviously looking to augment our board uh, for, for, to, to improve our governance structures within the business. Uh, we have uh, an SLA agreement with an experienced and, and licensed uh, marketing firm uh, that is focused on marketing uh, tourism outfits in Botswana and, and the region. And we have also a pool of CVs available for key, key staff uh, once we start operations. Uh, why should we look at this investment? Uh, what, these are the key investment attractions that we want to highlight to ourselves. Uh, we have a unique and attractive location. In terms of location, we can comfortably say that we, we are above par in terms of uh, you know, the scenery that will be presented by, by the hotel. So you could say that we are the prettiest girl in the, in the, in the city at this moment. Uh, we are looking to develop a fresh, uh, a new and fresh brand. We have a, a unique and a, an attractive design in terms of uh, the design of the hotel itself. Uh, you know, this, the requirement to, uh, in terms of roofing is, is, is to build, uh, to, or rather to roof using thatch. So that will be a key variant in the, in the sense that you don't get uh, a lot of that in the city. Uh, we believe that there's also significant growth opportunities uh, in terms of building a, a brand uh, of, or rather a chain of hotels across the country. Uh, the ask uh, is 12 million uh, US dollars. Uh, this could be either an, a senior debt secured on the hotel property and its movables, or a combination of uh, rather a structure that has a combination of debt and equity, what we call mezzanine debt, uh, with equity returns embedded on the instrument. Uh, so in terms of the use and application of funds, 83% uh, of our, our funding will go towards London buildings, 11% uh, towards furniture and fittings, and the rest towards uh, working capital, computer equipment, and, and motor vehicles. So with that, uh, our esteemed panelists, uh, we have our project.
Thank you very much. So, any yes, questions? Sir. Some brief questions from our panel of experts. Yes, Mr. Cavini. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, the mature big corporate guys who were here earlier, and I'm sure you had them, Guido was here talking about where he started, where he is. Um, the, the, the Piemont lady also, one of the things that came out of their presentation was collaboration. Uh, collaboration and also probably finding a, a management partner. Uh, if you look at the likes of uh, Cresta, a very strong management partner. Are, are those some of the things that you are willing to consider? Because I see that you've got um, a very ambitious structure. From what I gather, this could be a three, sorry, three, four, five star hotel that you are looking at. Or Do even, we have? Or even six. Six. Wow. Wow. That, that's, that's, I, I like your ambition. But do we have, do we have the skill to run that kind of a hotel in Botswana now? I have a lot of, I can, I can guarantee you that I have a lot of passion. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of ambition uh, about what I want to achieve. Uh, I, I also believe that skills can be procured. Uh, either through employees or through partnerships. Uh, like as we've indicated, we've got a, an SLA with a, a company that has expertise, that has expertise in tourism marketing. So that's one of the avenues that we want to collaborate, to bring in people that can assist us uh, to build a brand and to be a Botswana brand, a true Botswana brand. Uh, and I've considered, I've thought about uh, you know, the whole idea of giving it to a, an established brand, uh, but that takes away the option to, to build a, a truly in Botswana brand or indigenous brand, so to speak. Great. Um, any other brief question from the panel of experts? Or yeah, we... I, have, oh, yes. I have a question. Gerald Lawless. So you say that uh, it's going to be at the luxury level, right? It's, I must use something else here, because nobody can hear me, <laughs> except myself. Can you hear me? No, but I think maybe this is not on. There we go. All right. Thank you very much. No, sorry about that, but you can hear me now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I just wanted to ask, the, can you tell me just a little bit about your existing, the Salimo Rustic Hotel? Yes, that's the company's name. That's the company's name, yes. okay. So this is your first hotel? Yes, this yeah. will be okay. a... No, a, I just want, because I don't know the country, so I just wanted to understand that. But I do want to understand how a relatively small hotel, how many did you say, 70 bedrooms? Yes, 70 rooms. Yeah. And you're going to have a conference center. Do you know what size your conference center is? How many people can it take? We, we are looking at a capacity of a 1,000 people, thereabout. Right. And if you were successful and you got, say, a 1,000 people to come to your conference, where would they stay? Uh, well, the target is to, like what we have here at Grand Palm, a lot of people that, are, that have come here are not necessarily lodging uh, yeah. at the hotel, because there's a drive to build uh, the country as a mass destination. Uh, so there will be activities that will happen at the hotel, but not necessarily people uh, lodging at the hotel, those who are attending those activities. Right. And the question I would always ask is, especially in the luxury segment, what on your business plan is your average room rate? Uh, we, we are looking at uh, around $200 per person per night. 200 Yes. Dollars? 200 dollars. But, you know, the right. equivalent of $200. We'll charge in pulas, so that's about 2,500 2, pula. And uh, how, what, how much are you looking to raise in terms of the usual, the debt equity? How much are you looking to raise? I mean, are you putting money in yourself? Or are you looking for total debt? We are, we are looking at uh, raising uh, either senior debt or mezzanine debt. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.
I do like your passion and ambition because you also have another project. So um, we, we also have a luxury self-catering chalets and spas. Um, Ruendo Adventure Safaris Limited. Yes. yes, okay, let's hear all about it. I'll start the timer, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you again, Madam MC. Uh, this one is also on the banks of Habrun Dam. Uh, it's a boutique self-catering lodge uh, tucked into you know, the environment that is Habrun Dam. Uh, the business model is 15 luxury self-catering chalets. Uh, we will also have a state-of-the-art wellness uh, uh, and beauty spa. In terms of the activities that we'll undertake at the, at the site, we have uh, canoeing within the dam, uh, electric boating within the dam, uh, biking within the concession itself, uh, mountain biking, uh, guided walks within the concession and uh, game drives uh, as well. I've spoken earlier about the opportunity in terms of, uh, you know, what is available for players to come into uh, the tourism sector. Uh, it's a growth sector, as indicated by the numbers themselves. Uh, traction the same uh, as uh, the previous project. In terms of our key investment attractions, we also have an attractive location, uh, which is unique in Gaborone uh, from this uh, project as well. Uh, we have an exclusive wilderness, uh, or rather an opportunity to provide exclusive uh, wilderness activities, as I indicated there in our, in our business model. Uh, we have a unique and attractive uh, architectural okay. design in terms no, of the, no, the lodge itself. Uh, boating in the city will be also a key variant for us, uh, which will present a competitive advantage. And we also have uh, an opportunity to grow uh, as, as a brand uh, in this uh, sector. The ask in this one is $3 million. Uh, the same instruments would apply. 72% 70, of our funding will go towards uh, land, land and buildings, 14% uh, towards uh, furniture and fittings, and the balance uh, through to computer equipment, uh, motor vehicles, and working capital. With that, uh, thank you. Yep. What's your projected um, occupancy rate? Because just looking, 15 chalets, $3 million. Uh, what are your assumptions about the payback period for this? Uh, the, the, on a, on a conserved, conservative model, we're looking at a payback period of three years. So uh, we, we had a, our occupancy rates modeled at 60%, uh, but we've been advised that there is a lot of interest in this uh, segment, uh, particularly for business travelers who, look, who are looking for an outdoor uh, and nature type of uh, arrangement. Uh, we have been advised that there is a place somewhere in, within Gaborone locality which boasts of 90% occupancy rates. So we are very optimistic that uh, we can hit our targets. Mm -hmm. I, I assume these two projects of yours are at two different sites. Yes, sir. Okay, and in terms of your projections, which one of these two, because you can't start them simultaneously, which one of these two take precedent over the other? I want to believe that I can start them simultaneously. No. Uh, you are too ambitious. Just yes. yes. Uh, I like the fact that you advised Nelson Mandela, and he said uh, once that uh, it always seems impossible until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and have you looked at in terms of the design and the sustainability and everything that goes with that, and how you feel about the Thank you. How you feel about the eco lodges? Uh, have you looked at using uh, an outside brand, or are you looking to just brand it yourself? We we are really keen to develop our own indigenous brand. Uh, Very good. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm I'm happy to hear it. I think that it's a, it's a good thing to do. Why not? 
but I was just wondering from the expertise point of view and everything, how you feel you've done well on getting your debt in place and uh, ready to go. So like the previous questions, how do you manage to make sure that you've got the right expertise to be actual, to, up, to operate? We, I mean, we, we, we speak to experts uh, in, in the sector. Uh, and we are ready to, to be advised. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we've been advised of uh, is to build standard operating procedures, for example, in terms of that will tie in into building the brand uh, in terms of our service offering. Uh, and, and these are things that are, we are able to procure from uh, independent contractors, and we are willing to pay the price in order to get the right service, which is why at, at this stage, we've gone for an award-winning architect as part of that vision to build something that is out of this world. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shimane. I love your passion and ambition. Don't lose it. Thank you. So our next... <laughs> Our next project is an eco-friendly campsite at Maremi Village, and it's being presented by Shakile Abeleng Halope. He's the managing director of Mazizi Bush Camp and Stables. Please welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Dumelang. Assalamu alaikum, Jambo. Um, I'm pleased to present um, this wonderful project called Msizi Bush Camp and Stables. The name itself, Msizi, um, it's a Nguni name. If you use this one and hold it up high. The name itself, Msizi, is a Nguni name um, which translates directly into the helper. Our aim through this project is to help, to help tourism, to help penetration, and also provide, most importantly, a solution in the Tswapong region where this project is located. The biggest um, challenge to growing tourism there is um, reliable, good accommodation. This project is a three-star um, packed project offering an array of healthy, lifestyle-driven um, activities and also providing quality accommodation solutions in the region. Our aim is to help, and in helping, we want to also in integrate our community and be very cognizant of the environment that we're operating in. Our campsite is operated in an agro-tourism manner, a very sustainable manner, deliberately so. On the other half of the four hectare plot, we have animal husbandry happening there. Animal husbandry, which is um, agriculture. So whatever protein that we're raising on the agricultural side, it is guaranteed uptake on the campsite side. We're also ensuring that whatever waste that comes out of the two processes, it is recycled, reused, repurposed in order to reduce or make sure that we have a zero impact footprint on the environment. This is a, by all means, eco-friendly project that aims to reduce waste, to reduce anything that can be harmful on the environment. We also have a zero motor policy, zero motor policy which means that where other operators may prefer things such as quad bikes, we are more inclined to mountain biking as a healthy lifestyle choice. We prefer our customers to go trekking, to go running, 
as opposed to sitting and being indoor. This campsite boasts 37 rooms, chalet style, 37 rooms in a chalet style, fully tented. We have a res restaurant, a lounge, bar, and a boma, swimming pool, and a conference room. The conference room has a capacity of 50. This is because our target um, customers are individuals, um, groups, and also corporates. So the room really is meant for corporate retreats, um, team buildings, and so on. We're not by any means competing with a monstrosity like GICC. Just as I look, we are minimalistic in our approach, but aiming to enhance out of the 37 units, 10 of them are self-catering family units, and to support that, we also, family units, yes, the, um, next to the family units, we also have uh, a petting zoo to ensure that we're able to attract our target market, which is families. Thank you. That's great. Okay, I see Mr. Cavino reaching for his microphone very, very swiftly there. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, what, 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 I know you've been saying it, maybe I didn't pick it up very clearly. What is unique about your product? If you look at, for example, what is offered in the Moravian. How much did you say was the investment? Well, what is it that sets you apart? Uh, that, um, except when I say, well, there's no accommodation, I'll go there. It has to be, I want to go there because I'm being attracted to go there. We have to, there's a Moremi um, something, something going on at this current time. What is it that you are saying to these people that you want to invest in your uh, product that is going to be different from the existing in the Moremi area? Oh, you didn't... Oh, your clicker was there with the present, for the presentation. Oh, um, could we have the presentation up, please? <laughs> Apologies. No, no. You, you, we should have um, rectified this sooner. There's a monitor we, there. You can look. It shows you what's on. Do we have the presentation, please? Oh, right. All right, um, to answer your question, our campsite is unique because, um, like I said, we are all about sustainable um, tourism. It's a very eco-friendly campsite, and there is a growing movement around ecotourism that we want to tap into. And uh, location-wise, we're also located in route to the gorge, um, outside the concession area, outside the protected area, but we are within proximity because we are in the village and it is an owned land, um, is owned by the company. Um, there is no limitation in terms of the number of years of operation. You are guaranteed a return on investment and you are guaranteed longevity in the project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, one sort of question, yes? Yeah, Professor um, just, just to clarify, this is the Maremi, which is on the road to Francistown, right? This isn't the Maremi Game Reserve, which is uh, on the way to Chobe. True, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit about the financials of this? How much you're looking for and um, how much you've got, uh, what the occupancy is? Just a little bit about your business plan. Thank you. Um, this project requires um, approximately 1.7 million US dollars. And uh, the occupancy rate, um, 60% normally. And this is taken throughout the year. 
this is not at, at peak. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, General Gerald Lawless. <laughs> thank you. Do you know what the ADR is? Sorry? The average daily rate. Do you know what it is? Yes. What's the, what's the feasibility? What's in your feasibility? What average daily rate are you looking at? Our average um, daily rates are 80 US dollars for your standard sharing rooms, which are your either twin single beds or double sharing rooms. Mm -hmm. And then we have 110 US dollars on the family apartments, which are self-catering self double apartments. And to the question of the professor as well, what kind of return? How many years are you looking payback? Our amortization plan was on 20 years. Mm -hmm. 20 years repayment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Um, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Um, moving on. Is this yours? Your. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on. We've got a culturally. We've got a culturally inspired heritage lodge by Mabua Lesego Mabua, director, founder of Mabwise Consultancy. Okay. Oh, we got just technical issues here. Thank you. A culturally inspired heritage lodge. Thank you very much. Oh, try, try this. Oh, yep, there we go. You're okay. in action. And there's the clicker there. Oh, thank you. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Setkaka Safari Lodge. Setkaka is a small village around uh, in the outskirts of, of Mau. And uh, basically, as many presenters have, have, have made uh, their presentations, Mau is the, 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 the center the anchor for tourism for uh, Botswana. If you talk about the access, uh, the, uh, this is meant to service the Okavango Delta, so Dilo. Okavango Delta, remember, they are the only two heritage sites in, uh, in Botswana, Moremi Game Reserve and Our Drive, uh, Chobe National Park, Marikari National Park. And, and, and if you were to draw a line, um, uh, 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 using a campus, uh, drawing a circle uh, centered around Maung, you realize that everything, all these uh, uh, um, um, tourist areas are within 12, 200 kilometers from, from, from Maung. And I'm from Maung myself, and, and, and I've uh, uh, lived there for years. I know how the market is there. So uh, in brief, we are looking at between 100 to 250 uh, rooms. Uh, we have experience, I have uh, myself and my wife have experience of uh, operating a small facility, eight rooms. And basically when you talk about 100 to 150, we are not interested in running this. Basically creating wealth for, for the family and looking at the foster. A foster, this is informed by the fact that you go to Maung at the moment. I don't know uh, whether we have anything near a foster in the in terms of the services and taking advantage of the the water and uh, myself coming from there i feel the current uh, facilities that are they haven't taken advantage of the of the water uh, and and and, and um, giving the services to eco friendly we have the communities i grew up there i'm from there so basically partnership and uh, beneficiation for the communities that are around that that area and looking at a green because it's a, a totally new um, a project, no legacies. Uh, it starts with uh, myself and and my wife, and we negotiate it from there. And, and, and that's how simple it is. It can be a, an advantage or a disadvantage. We own the the piece of land. Uh, I did talk about this uh, driving from there to Moremi, uh, around an hour. 
uh, two hours to Chobe National Park. You have a, can do a boat drive from there. Uh, you will see the waters. We are at the deeper side of the Tamalakani River uh, into the uh, Kalahari. Uh, uh, this. Uh, I look at uh, this map. Uh, I did talk about uh, where it's located. Sakaka is there. Uh, the Makajikadi, the Chobe, the, the, the Kui Harbors are uh, serviced by uh, this facility. On the map, you have on the right, uh, this is where the location is. We are near to Tamalakan, wonderful uh, Tamalakan River Lodge. And I think the rates are currently 3,000 pula or something. Uh, I think uh, 180, uh, 150 uh, um, uh, US dollars per, per night. And this is where we are, uh, wonderful neighbors. Um, I think the Honorable Minister is not here, but this is what you see currently in Maung in that area, in that zone. Uh, those reds and the, the, the seven, six facilities that are existing. And I, I, I feel this should be declared a zone uh, because it's uh, the same way it's been done with Kasane. And this is the green where Sikakta is. Uh, I did talk about the gap, um, uh, the market landscape, uh, many players in the location. It's quite scary when I look at this. Uh, there are so many presenters who want to build hotels in Maui. And obviously in the partnership, we'll have to interrogate the numbers and even look into the, into the future. But the growth uh, that is being anticipated, I think we have confidence uh, uh, in that. Uh, packaging this with uh, other facilities that I have, I uh, um, also own a piece of land uh, where currently some horse races are carrying and partnership with this. But it just to give you, the business case has been done uh, with the returns between 11 to 14%. I think uh, the pictures, this is where the, the location of the, 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 the place, uh, and this is the wonderful design, but uh, internally culture and culture and culture. The partnerships model, if you allow me, um, funding, building, and leasing out to operators, seasoned operators, we can have the uh, BOT, and what is important is partnerships uh, with international companies for marketing and customer handling. I don't know whether I'm done my three minutes. Uh, thank, th th thank you, but I have a, a wonderful, uh, youthful team in me, and we can respond anytime. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Just a couple of quick questions from our panel of experts. That was great. Um, we're just short on time, mm -hmm. so brief question. Okay. Gerald Lawless. <laughs> yeah, well done. Just, uh, I know you've obviously got your act together and a lot of stuff that you're putting there. Did you say you're running an eight-bedroom facility yourself at the yes, moment? Yes, in, in Haburuni. With your wife? Yes. And, and, and the experience, I, I, I tell you, it's a, it's a headache. No. But, but, but because we have the land, we have uh, strategic... Does your wife know you think it's a headache? But, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, of course. When we don't, dis we don't agree. That's Remember, okay. I think, yes. But, I, I just yeah. say one thing that would strike me as a hotelier, that you say you're going to lease it out to a hotel operator to run it. You know, a hotel operator, they will not lease. An international one will not anyway. They will do a hotel management agreement but they, they, they won't lease. They will just take a percentage of your revenue and a percentage of your bottom line and give you reservations and put it through that way. But um, have you already got somebody who's willing to lease it? No, this is very fresh. Okay. I think right. uh, uh, people are lucky that are seeing this for the first time. And, okay. uh, uh, and this forum is, is really helping me to market it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, one last quick question. Yeah, Mr. Hi, Ma, 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 Ma. So you are taking Cresta head on, eh? I like that. Um, My friend. But tell me, obviously your Cresta's being the biggest operator in Maum, uh, will probably have their own understanding of how, how it looks like and how it is performing. Um, and some of the things that uh, are probably going to be blamed is lack of uh, or inadequate connectivity in terms of numbers of tourists that could go there, but because of the handicaps that maybe our national carrier has, they are not getting the numbers. And Cresta will probably say, 
probably they are not performing because of that. I don't know. I'm just saying. How do you plan to change that with your VV oh, no IP outlook? Because that's what I picked up, that you're focusing on... Um, what's, this, what's this word that we're talking about from America yesterday? Will Smith and the rest. No. How I, do you get them there? Yes. I think, I think uh, what is good is that if you talk about Cresta, I see my friend here. It's, it's, that's why it's scary to sit here and, and talk about competition with, with him. Um, we are able to get information from us since it's a listed organization and use that to inform the numbers that, that we do. But I feel with collaboration with um, international marketing companies and for customer handling, because like I'm saying, if you go to the Okovango Delta, uh, look at that map, um, uh, we are at the edge of, of the Okovango Delta. People pay, uh, this, this facility that I'm showing you is, uh, where is it? Did I press something? Hey. Um, yeah, this one, inquire. People pay $1,000 per, per day. And it's all an issue of collaboration. This is uh, my uh, cousin's facility. It's been booked for the next 12 months. So that's why I'm talking about partnership with, with distance. Because it's transit going into the, into the Delta or Chobe National Park, transit coming back, going to Zodilo Hills or Makadi Kadi uh, Pens. But I did talk about the legacy. Don't take uh, for granted the legacy. Uh, issues. You look at some of the ones that have been uh, existing. Um, the legacy cost can be, uh, uh, um, yeah. And, and, and like I'm saying, I'm positioning this to be enjoying the sun, the, the, the sun and the. Actually, an extension of this is, uh, is you see those trees, is an island there. There are a lot of exciting things that we can talk about with a potential investor to extend this, maybe a secret love garden there or something. And that's, that's how <laughs> aggressive we are. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. Thank you, but we'll be back with another session after lunch. Thank you very much.